Good evening and welcome to Massey United Insurance's Dinah Lane. I'm your host, Andrew Seeley, and joining us tonight, Philo Wallace on Skype from Trinidad and Tobago. He takes a swipe at what's happening with Sunil Narine. Roland Butcher is in the studio, and we're going to talk West Indies cricket, West Indies versus Australia, and a special feature from Joel Manning. All that and more tonight on Massey United Insurance's Dinah Lane. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. And welcome back to Massey United Insurance's Dying of Life. And join us for the first time on Massey United Insurance's Dying of Life on Skype from where he now lives, a former Barbados opening batsman and West Indies opener, and a former Barbados captain as well, uh, Philo Wallace. Welcome to Massey United Insurance's Dying of Life. Thank you very much, Andrew. It's a pleasure to be part of Massey United Dying of Life program. Uh, Philo, you are now resident in Trinidad and have been for the past couple of years. Uh, Sunil Narayan, the saga of Sunil Narayan continues. Uh, what is happening in Trinidad and Tobago relative to Sunil Narayan at this stage? No, the, the, the word is in Trinidad and Tobago about Sunil Narayan obviously being banned from playing international cricket for bowling as well. Uh, it, it, they, they've seen that, they believe that it's been hard done, a bit unlucky. Uh, the thing is about the release of the ICC, actually, is that he, all of his deliveries are illegal, which is quite surprising for, for a bowler who's been ranked number one in T20 cricket and also won in, in the over cricket. So the Trinidadians are, are taken back, actually, by the decision uh, of the ICC. But obviously, the ICC have carried out their testings on the young man and realized that he's not within the legal limit in relation to his goal in action. So for the, but for the past two years, uh, Philo, there has been discussion about the whole question of uh, Narine's actions. So it's not something re really which kind of snuck up on us, is it? No, I, I, I got a little bit, though. I got a little bit from a birdie I, because I dropped over Savada on Mornings. And Narine has been under such for 2010. Mm -hmm. But again, Andrew, these reports are submitted to the to the boards and they pay no mind that they're not paying any attention to these reports. And as you allow people to, to go along on their daily work and you don't correct them, then they, they, they progressively got worse. So obviously, but over the last two years, a lot has been said about Narang and his action. He's gone through a lot of remedial work. He even went through remedial work earlier this year in private uh, under the full card and I regret they, they, they were helping. And he came out of it, I thought he came out of it on scare. But now we're seeing another problem in relation to him. Actually, he's throwing every delivery, which is quite sad. And I, I, I've been doing a little digging about Solon the right. He played a lot of his early cricket with soft ball. And here in Trinidad, they, 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 they felt the soft ball. The bowlers actually mm -hmm. throw. And obviously, from developing those bad habits and then graduating into that hard ball, he can't seem to get rid of that bad habit of throwing the odd one. Now he's throwing every delivery. I, I understand that not only has the West Indies Cricket Board suggested that they're backing Narayan 100% and supporting him, but his own club, uh, Queen's Park, where I believe you play some cricket as well, have indicated uh, that they'll be backing Narayan. But what are some of the measures which are going to be taken uh, in terms of this backing of Narayan? I, I think the West Indies Cricket Board is right in supporting Narayan. Obviously, it happened on their watch when he was called for an industry like And Queen's Park Cricket Club has been very, very, very kind to to know the right. They've given him a lot of support. The coach, uh, Mr. Furlong, has been very instrumental in helping uh, to know the right uh, through his, his turbulent times. But I think that that support from the West East Cricket Board, they have to employ a, a, a bowling consultant to the right who, who will get the right to, to buy into what has to happen in relation to changing his bowling action. And not changing his bowling action completely. I think what they need to do is try to get the right to bowl more side on and to, uh, try to have a traditional of, of spinners' action. I think what is happening to Narayan at the present moment, he's bowling front on. So when he bowls front on, he, he has the ability, obviously, to, to bowl illegal delivery. But when he gets side on, he will, he will have a, a straighter arm while bowling his off breaks. And I think that he has to also look to do to know the right is cut out that, that cannonball. Just try to cut it out and perfect the off break. Maybe, you know, have a, a slight variation. So try not to have too many variations in his action. So the West East Cricket Board needs to appoint someone who is really going to 
you know, settle down with the right and work with them daily and make sure that, that they build a nice unity, a nice relationship from the right there, really prosper and come back. I believe he has, still has a future. He's only 70, 27 years old. He's a young man. I mean, I believe he has another 10 years in, in, in cricket, but he needs to have someone working with him who will really get him to buy into what they want him to do. And the right always said, believe can come out of this one season if you do the hard work. Uh, Philo, what do you what, what do you make of comments which suggested uh, from some quarters that uh, that Narine was targeted because of his outstanding performance, which suggests uh, some kind of conspiracy theory? What what do you make of those comments? I, I think some of the comments are, 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 are unwarranted because when you look at it, so then Narine is a threat, yes, but there is something wrong with his action. ICC strength is stamp of illegal goal and action. We have to we have to respect the, the, the ICC. The International Cricket Council. I don't think they would target Sunil right per se. I first thought that he was being unfairly done because here's a man who's played a couple of games in Sri Lanka, who worked pretty well in the game, all of a sudden you're saying that he's throwing. And you get to the, to the last game of the series to say that he, he, he can't pull and stuff like that. So if, he, if, he's, if he's going to be throwing from the first game, let the people know from the first game he's throwing, instead of allowing him to go through the entire series. But ICC, obviously, they're the ones who are controlling cricket, and they don't want these illegal bowling actions uh, to, to be a problem. Uh, we saw that Ashmal from Pakistan, he no longer can make the Pakistan side because he's not as potent as he used to be. So the, the, there is, the, obviously, the, 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 something that is, going, that is happening with these off-spinners. And I believe the problem with the off-spinners of the day is that they want to go too many deliveries. When you look at off-spinners of yesteryear, they're going to all break with a lovely drifter and a straight ball. Now guys are going to room ball and cannon ball. I think that those variations are causing the, the bowlers their demise. And they just need to focus on bowling legitimate balls with slight variations. Once upon a time, a spinner would beat you in a flight. Now a man is beating with a ball called a cannon ball. So I think that the variations is causing a lot of problems. But you're listening, you're listening to Philo Wallace and you're watching him on Massey United Insurance Designer Life. When we come back, more from Philo Wallace. This time, we're going to talk a bit about the regional PCL cricket. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. Welcome back to Massey United Insurance Design and Life. And still on the line, uh, direct on Skype from Trinidad and Tobago, Philo Wallace, who is now resident there. Uh, Philo Wallace did particularly well in the regional four-day tournament when it was on, uh, known as so many different names, Shell Shield, Red Stripe, regional four-day tournament, President's uh, Trophy, West Indies four-day. Uh, Philo, your thoughts? Uh, we are at a break in the regional four-day at the moment, a uh, series starting this, this weekend as this program will be aired. Uh, not too many outstanding performances, some centuries, but some serious disappointments, uh, particularly uh, windwards and leewards as usual, uh, that game played in Dominica. Your thoughts on the Regional Professional Cricket League, as they call it? As for the Regional Professional Cricket League, which is the great chairs of the, the present best of this uh, president, uh, right to the camera. Uh, obviously, uh, he's, he's trying to, to the best people, they're trying to professionalize the 4 day game. But in professionalizing the 4 day game, you have to look at and the quality of players that you're calling professional cricketers. When you look at the, the, the PCL for 2015, it, it, it started obviously lopsided to be in Ghana. It's played the first three games at home and has walloped everyone that came to Georgetown, which is expected. But when you look at the other region, the other professional sites, they, they're struggling. Barbados had a very poor game. Uh, the members and leavers continue to struggle. Uh, Jamaica is there, there, both in Trinidad and Tobago are uh, still trying to find their way. They've lost players. And I think that the quality of cricket is not as what we expect it to be. I think, Andrew, it, 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 it comes down to the coaching staff within those, those franchises. I think the franchise coaches need to do a lot more with these young cricketers. They're not like when I used to play, you know, when it's Courtney Brown and the Puerto Ricans and, and Sharon Campbell's, you know, we, we were a group coming through from the other 90s. And we had a good understanding of cricket. We look at the young cricketers that are playing today. 
the understanding and the level of thinking situations, especially math situations, is not as good as yesteryear. So the parents of a, a different question frequently, they need a lot of talking to. More work needs to be done. Because from here, they go from the professional cricket league, they go to West Indies cricket. If you look at Sandrika, he scored 100 in a, in a game and he returned from Sri Lanka, but he didn't get any scores after that. And now he's in Australia. What is his confidence going to be like? Right, traffic started well in the PCL, but we need continuity and they're going to struggle. That our cricketers are not at that enough uh, to really look to cement their place in the and cement their performances in the professional cricket league. I looked at Trinidad in their last game against Jamaica. I called John Campbell, some of the kids with 81 runs, 130 something full runs. And, and, and to me, a, a non bowler. But because of the tentativeness of the batsman, the Trinidad, the bigger batsman, he got seven wickets. I didn't say, I'm not saying they bowl good balls, but a non bowler should not be bowling 31 overs. But the tentativeness in this show play allowed him to become a, 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 a bowling all rounder or a batting all rounder. So, so the quality of batsmanship is quite poor so far in the PCL, and I don't want to keep knocking the Leavers and Leavers. I think the Leavers really need shaking. And the West East Cricket Board need to hold the Leavers Island by their shoulders and shake them and get them to understand that they have a role to play in developing cricketers for West Indies cricket. Because they continue to struggle, they've changed their whole coaching staff, and they're still struggling. But, 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 but for all that, they've, they've changed, they've changed the coaching staff, but they haven't changed too many of the players because the same names keep repeating and the same names keep repeating and failing. But, but that's what I'm saying. It, 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 the players will have to play because the players are not improving. The coaches might be doing the right things, but the players are not buying into what the coaches are doing. So they need to change. They need to try and find players who are really committed uh, to, to this, to, to, to Lever Dynasty cricket in particular, because I'm, I'm really saddened about the quality of cricketers and the quality of cricket that the Lever Dynasty have been playing for the last 10 years. It is a very sad position to be in invest in this cricket. The Lindbergh Islands, they, they continue to be topsy turvy in relation to their cricket. They're trying to obviously build a unit, but they're still not as stable as, as one would expect them to be after uh, being led in the, in the management department by your heart, Sebastian, a former uh, Lindbergh Islands player, and also Ian Allen, the former West Indies of Lindbergh Islands uh, player. And those two guys have been there for a very long time, and they seem not to be able to get those players to perform at a level that is respectable for professional cricket. Uh, if we talk now, fellow, some people uh, euphemistically suggested it's a professional cricket league, but no one seems to know it's on. Uh, there's hardly any radio coverage and, and zero absence of uh, television coverage, uh, save for a uh, little streaming uh, with a one camera. So, and, and, there's, and there's no advertisement of the tournament, so the, the, the professionalism is merely because the players are being paid a fee. Yeah, I agree with you. The professionalism is the professionalism because they're being paid and they're retain other contracts. But when you look at the cricket, nobody knows the cricket is even played. Ghana is actually to play this weekend in Trinidad, and they're not at the participants in the newspaper or the radios. They're not, they're not the precise nothing uh, to, to say that this game is on. And then you look at it, the territory of course seem not to, to want to promote the cricket because everything is a boss. Mm -hmm. There are no sponsors. Some of the franchises have no sponsors. So obviously the, the, the territory of course are not going to dip into their finances and help out these franchises. So a, a lot of responsibility on these franchises to try and generate income to help them to promote the cricket and also obviously give a bit more to the players. The board is trying its best. They've just increased price money and, and all kinds of stuff to try and get the players to understand that if you perform, you can get some, some, some extra dollars going into the Christmas holidays. But the territorial boards are not good enough for the professional cricket league. I am not certain if the territorial boards are happy with this professional cricket league. <laughs> But that's a, that's a good point you make, Phil. I know you're in touch with what's happening in Barbados. You are in Trinidad. There was some discussion in terms of a, a, a kind of rift between the Trinidad board and the West Indies Cricket Board, between the president Azim Bazavra. What has happened is that Balda Mahabir has, in fact, resigned from the West Indies Cricket Board. Uh, what, what is the feeling between WICB and TTCB at the moment? Your take. I, I think it's on a nice edge because you don't hear you don't hear a lot of dialogue coming up from from the Trinidad to be able to go in relation to West Indies cricket rules uh, stuff and mandates. And I, I, the time I had a town hall meeting there a couple of months ago, he made a meeting. It's, it's Vice President Nags and Mrs. Wright from, from Dominica, which, which was a shame. And as a the president of Trinidad Cricket Board, who's also a director of West Indies cricket board, 
He did not sit at that head table with Mr. Cameron. He sat in the back row. And I, and I sat next to him, that's quite strange. You're in my territory, and I can't sit on the head table with you. And actually, we, we represent the same cause, which is best in this cricket. So there is some rip. Mm-hmm. And there is some rip there, but obviously not a lot is being said about it. Everybody is keeping it hush hush. You know, typical, uh, you know, Caribbean uh, mentality and behavior because then you speak and speak the truth, you might be victimized. But at the end of the day, I believe that Trinidad and Tobago has a role to play in the city cricket and a very big role. They're one of those, they're, they're one of the territorial boards that are quite strong in relation to financial uh, support. They have NGC that's one of the main sponsors that are the sports company entry and that sponsored them as well. So they need to make a, a, a serious representation when it comes to West Indies cricket and particularly Trinidad cricket. But there is a rip. They just lost a director. He has been replaced. Uh, and that director, obviously, was, he, he was one that was sided with Joe Garner when they were going up mm-hmm. against Cameron for the election. So there's a lot of talk that maybe, you know, he got squeezed. He sat on the, the, the um, I think, the marketing committee or finance committee, and he maybe got squeezed out of his position. But he said he's still, um, uh, obviously, he's, he's still committed. Uh, that he's still committed to the train and the cricket. But how could you be in? I said you were committed, and then you get and then you release yourself and still want to be committed on the upside. So that is left to be seen. But there's a, there's still, there's a lot of tension, people believe, between the train and the middle of the world and the less least of the world. And that, that friction needs to stop. Well, that's Philo Wallace. Uh, Philo, thank you very much. Always great to have you, and certainly great to have you on Skype all the way from Trinidad and Tobago on Massey United Insurance's line and line. Thank you very much, Andrew. All the very right best to you. And when we come back on Matthew United Insurance Design and Length, we're going to talk to Roland Butcher. The West Indies are in Australia. How will we do? Roland Butcher will take us there. Back in a moment. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. And welcome back to Massey United Insurance's Zainal Life. And joining us in the studio now is our former England batsman, Roland Butcher. He is, in fact, a Barbadian, though, a member of the Barbados Cricket Association Board and also a director at the University of the West Indies in sports. Uh, Roland, the West Indies team are now down under. How successful can we be in Australia? Well, that is a, a trick question, Andrew. Um, this is going to be an extremely difficult tour for the West Indies, coming on the back of being defeated by Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka. And obviously Australia have just beaten New Zealand, who are a pretty good side, quite convincingly. So I expect that the West Indies are gonna be in for a rough, very rough time. Um, Australia minus the two Mitchells, one retired, one injured, Johnson and Stark respectively. Uh, does that solve a problem for the West Indies or, or does the, the, the dominance of Australia's bowlers still stand? I think the problem is still there. Uh, Mitchell Starr obviously has made himself into a top-class bowler right now and he will be missed because as a left-armer he adds variation to their side. Mitchell Johnson again another left-arm fast bowler his raw pace would be missed but I think the replacement players that Australia have got will fill that breach. I mean Colton is, is pretty quick and you've got people in waiting in the wings like Jackson Bird, Pat Cummings etc. So Australia will still be a very potent force as a bowling unit. Uh, any surprise to you that the West Indies selectors went to the same squad that came out of Sri Lanka? Uh, slightly surprised, yes. Um, obviously the conditions are different. Um, in Sri Lanka you'd expect much slower, lower wickets that turn. Um, Australia now is going to be a lot quicker, much more bounce, etc. Um, I'm a bit surprised that someone like Leon Johnson probably didn't make that side um, because the last time he played test cricket, he didn't do that badly. And mm. that was particularly in Australia, in South Africa. So I similar think type, similar, similar, type similar conditions and you're going to get a lot of fast bowling. So I think someone like him probably would have been unfortunate not to make the trip. But I think generally, um, they haven't had a lot of cricket, the other players, to really choose from. Uh, are, are these our best players or are our best players currently in Bangladesh and then heading to Australia to play the Big Bash? 
Some argue, you know. So what would you say? Well, when you say the best, um, I mean, I just think right now we don't have any best players. <laughs> right <laughs> now, <laughs> we might have players who, who can get into the side. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes the selectors have to be a little bit brave and look at a player and say, hang on, maybe... I'll use Jonathan Carter as an example. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody would say he's inconsistent, etc. That may be true. But in a time when West Indies are looking for players who can change a game, and win matches. He has proven that on, on occasions he can play exceptional innings that win matches. We don't have players right now in the West Indies size capable of doing that. I would take a chance on someone like him mm -hmm. to say, you know, on his day he will play a fantastic game and he can develop after that. But are we brave enough? I guess not. I think we tend to go for safety and in our safety we, we show no innovation whatsoever. Because we have a team now of players basically um, in the top half who tend to be fairly defensive players. So what we have is a situation where we played um, where we play matches and we bat a number of overs but we don't score too many runs. Well that's very true. I mean we, we don't have match winners mm -hmm. as batsmen. There's not a match winning batsman in that side. Um, there hasn't been for a long time. I mean, you would have hoped that over the years someone like Darren Bravo who has had a lot of opportunities would have developed into that type of player. But even at such a long stage, he, he's still struggling to come to terms with being a top-class player in, in Test cricket. So if he is not able to do that, the new guys who are coming into the side, you can't really expect them to front up and be match winners. There has been some discussion that um, Martin Samuels uh, have been chosen to play in the Bangladesh Big, Big Bash uh, would not be in the frame of mind to move to Test cricket now, having not played any the longer version of the game for at least uh, four to six weeks? Well, I mean, listen, people will always say it. I mean, you can't just be playing T20 cricket, which is three hours in total, mm -hmm. to then go into a test match where you're playing five days, three sessions a day. Now, that is a totally different game. Um, for me, it would have been better if Marlon Samuels had played um, they, bought, they play three rounds of the PCL mm -hmm. at the moment. It's not the highest cricket in the world, but at the same time, you're actually getting match practice. You're in the field, you're batting for long periods. That would be much better for him in terms of getting him ready for a series against Australia, which, you know, you're not playing against Zimbabwe. You know, you're playing against one of the top sides. So to come from T20, I, I would expect that he's going to struggle for a while. And it's not a long series. Uh, your thoughts, Roland, as you mentioned, uh, three test matches. Any opportunity of West Indies winning one of these three test matches? Well, let's look at it from a realistic point of view. From where West Indies are right now, where Australia are, I would say currently, you know, they will really struggle to come away with a draw in any of these test matches. I would expect that by virtue of Australia being a more superior team in terms of batting and bowling and fielding, that Australia should win the series right now. And two other quick topics, uh, Roland, pink ball test match, uh, Australia versus New Zealand. Uh, the largest crowd at a test match uh, in Australia for quite a while, over 100,000 uh, in aggregate. Uh, your thoughts on the pink ball? I think the innovation is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, not just the color of the ball, but the <laughs> fact that you're going to play a test cricket at, night, at night. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we've seen what happens, what's happened with test cricket over the years, in the recent times. Um, apart from the Ashes series, and maybe if India play India, India play Pakistan, would you get these large crowds for test cricket? Everywhere else is struggling, so you need that sort of innovation. And Australia have always been at the forefront of, of this innovation, and going back to Paco and et cetera, et cetera. So it's fantastic that they're able to start this process, and it's something that we in the Caribbean need to look at. It may be difficult in some other parts of the world, say somewhere like India, where the Jew plays an important mm -hmm. part and would make the ball very slippery, particularly for their spinners. So India might fight the, the idea of having night cricket in India because it will certainly not be a good thing for them because their spin bowlers will not be able to mm -hmm. bowl during the night. But I think it has merit everywhere else that hasn't got a dual factor. And finally, uh, Roland, your thoughts uh, on the pitch as prepared by the BCCI for South Africa in that test match at Nagpur? Well, I mean, it was a winning pitch for, for <laughs> India. Um, certainly, at home, there's no question about it. All teams struggle against India, in India, particularly with the slow bowlers. Uh, South Africa is no exception. They're not the best players of spinners. And they have been brought up on good, fast, bouncy wickets, true pitches, you know, they play their shots. And India realized that, you know, you know, in recent time, they haven't had a good time against South Africa. So in India, you know, we have to beat them. So it really was not a, a good wicket for test cricket. 
Because if you have an entire test match and not one single player on both sides scores a 50, <laughs> um, it either tells you that the bowling is exceptional or the pitch is that difficult. But that's a Roland Butcher talking about a difficult pitch at Nagpur in India. It's always a good feeling to be talking to someone that you've seen mature, grow and craft their skills. This morning, it gives me great pleasure to be talking to Anthony Allen. Anthony, recently back in Barbados, what are you up to these days? Hey, good morning. Um, just with the UE team at the moment, um, we're here training for the final. So um, since I got back, we played a few three-day games in local competition and some 50 overs. So just preparing for the 50 over final now. All right, well, you would have been back from England. Just tell us a bit about the experience and a few of the teams that you had been playing for while you were there. Well, firstly, I went away. I played for Walton on Thames um, Cricket Club in Surrey. Um, yeah, it was a good experience. Um, coming off an injury, it was good to get back out and play. Uh, we played up around 16 to 18 games, so a lot of cricket um, in a short space of time. Got back into the groove and everything, and played against teams like uh, Chessington, just local teams um, in the Surrey Championship League. And yeah, we did well. We um, got promoted. We won the league, and hopefully, you know, uh, next year the team could go on and do the same in, the, in a higher division. Well, while you were there, you had to be exposed to some top-level coaching. When you think about the coaching that you would have received in England and the game situations that you would have been put in, how does that compare to the standard of cricket here in Barbados or even in the Caribbean? Um, well, firstly, when I went away around. 14 years old, um, I went to Dulwich College. Um, the coach there was uh, Bill Avery, so I was quite uh, lucky to be around an uh, Ashes winning uh, batsman. So um, he helped my game, you know, to develop a lot. Uh, just doing the basics right, um, getting into good positions and stuff like that. I also was lucky enough to represent um, most of the Surrey youth teams. Um, Surrey on the 15 right up to Academy. And yeah, um, I want to say there's a big difference here, but um, in terms of structure, it's different and it's all catered to getting a young professional into a first class setup. So I think young players are exposed more to first class environments um, a bit easier and a bit earlier. Yeah. All right, so now that you're back home, are your sights set on probably breaking into the West Indies, West Indies team or are you looking to head back to England possibly next year? Well, um, yeah, both is possible actually, but um, I think you've got to take it a step at a time. So in terms of West Indies, I first got to get into either Barbados setup or CCC setup. So um, yeah, just trying to get into a setup and uh, do as well as I can. And yeah, if the opportunity to travel and play cricket, I mean, England, Trinidad, wherever, uh, I would be looking to take that and you know improve my game. All right, finally, Anthony, there's been a lot of stick in terms of test cricket lately, you know. Many people have been saying that youngsters have lost the interest or the passion for the longer form of the game. What are your thoughts on this particularly? Are you interested in playing test cricket or are your sights set on the 2020 and the one-day formats of cricket? Um, I mean, first of all, uh, I mean, growing up as a young man, I remember watching uh, Brian Lara win a test match for the West Indies. Um, won a test match for the West Indies, I think it was 153 at the Oval. So, I mean, from early age, everyone wants to play a test cricket for the West Indies or for whatever country they're playing for. And yeah, I mean, I just remember that evening, won a test match. I, I think I continued playing cricket outside with my brothers and stuff like that. So, I mean, uh, in terms of young people, I think once you can master, as a young professional, once you can master um, the longer format, I mean, the, the shorter um, formats become way easier. So, I just want to, you know, uh, get my game to a level where I can play all. So if I can just get the four-day stuff, get the three-day stuff um, sorted, I think the shorter format will be taken care of. Well, Anthony, thanks for talking, us, talking to us here. All the best for the future. A young man who's still passionate about the longest form of the game, Test Cricket. You're watching Massey United Insurance's Line and Line. Well, that's our program for tonight. A special thanks to Philo Wallace, who was on Skype from Trinidad and Tobago, Roland Butcher, who was in the studio, and of course, young Joel Manning. Join us next week for more on Massey United Insurance's Line of Life.